Now, I am no art expert, but I think it can be agreed upon that this is a pretty nice painting. The expressions of the subjects, the intricate use of shading, and of course, the beautiful colors. Especially that brown tone that is used throughout the painting. I wonder how they are able to capture such a rich, earthy tone. Oh, it's dead people. The painting shown in the intro is called L'Interieur d'une Cuisine by artist Martin Scholling, or Interior of the Kitchen in English. The pigment used to create those various earthy tones is called Mummy Brown. No, that name is not just for fun, the pigment is literally made from mummies. Which means, yeah, Interior of the Kitchen was painted with dead people. Now that fun little fact obviously raises a few questions, like why, and how, and what the f Let's start with why. Artists need paint, and paint needs pigments. Pigments can be made from a wide variety of things. The key thing that makes a pigment is that it's insoluble, meaning if you drop it into water, it won't blend with the water. If it does blend, congratulations, you have a dye. Various materials have been used by artists for thousands of years. Prehistoric artists used red ochre to get, you guessed it, red. Lapis lazuli has been used by a variety of cultures to get blue. Every color you've ever seen in art has some sort of natural origin. Now of course today, many of these colors are synthesized and if you want a nice shade of blue, you don't have to hunt down lapis, rather you just heat a few chemicals in a kiln and boom, you got blue. Thanks chemistry. Now this is a luxury we often overlook today. Many artists tend to be perfectionists. If they envision a certain shade of brown, they want that certain shade of brown. And if they have the money, they're going to shell it out for that perfect color. This brings us to the how. Europeans defiling the corpses of long dead Egyptians wasn't something new. In fact, ever since Europeans first laid eyes on Egyptian mummies, they wanted to do weird stuff with them. Grinding mummies up into dust and consuming said dust as a medicine was a common practice between the 12th and 17th centuries. So when somebody decided to mix mummy dust with white pitch and mirror in the 16th century, it was probably only like the 5th or 6th weirdest thing somebody has done with a mummy by this point. While editing this video, I found something neat. The word mummy comes from the Arabic mumia, which I probably mispronounced. That word originally referred to just bitumen, a type of natural asphalt that was used as medicine. Mummies just so happened to be embalmed with bitumen, which is why they were ground up for medicinal purposes. Over time, mumia stopped meaning medicine derived from embalmed corpses, and started meaning embalmed corpses. And mumia eventually became mummy. This pigment became common because it was great for a lot of things. Shading, skin tones, so on. What led to it losing its popularity, however, was the fact it was inconsistent. Artists would buy it only to find that its texture and coloration would be different from the last time. This inconsistency led to artists looking for alternatives. In fact, most of these artists had no idea that it was made with actual mummies. It wouldn't be until the 19th century that it became widespread knowledge that the pigment was made this way. The realization disgusted many of the artists that used it, with British artist Edward Burne Jones famously burying his last tube of Mummy Brown. Now, you would think that production of Mummy Brown stopped in the 19th century once its popularity died out, right? Well, no. In fact, it was still being produced up until the 1960s by London-based company C. Robertson, who stated they only stopped because they ran out of mummies. You can buy pigments labeled as Mummy Brown today, but they are, of course, synthetic. Hopefully you found this video interesting, and until next time, take care.